Have you heard about the incredible prizes in the new Tipperary GA Clubs draw? A half a million euro prize fund featuring cars to be won every month, loads of cash and holidays. And if you ever dreamed of being a racehorse owner, now's your chance. Hi everyone, Rachel Blackmore here. I have a passion for horse racing, just like you all have a passion for GAA. In the new Tipperary GAA Club Draw, starting on the 1st of October, there's an amazing prize to be won. It's a racehorse called Sean Hogan, who's in training with Mouse Morris. If you are the lucky winner, you'll get to pick the racing colours for Sean Hogan. You'll also get to take home all his prize money. There's a Renault car there to be won as well, so you'll have no excuses to go racing and cheer him on. There's cash and car prizes to be won every month, so this really is a fantastic prize. So I'd really encourage everyone to show their support and sign up today. The Tipperary GA Club's draw. You have to be in it to win it. Joining me now is the chairman of Bally Horine, Tom O'Gorman. Uh, Tom, this is a huge weekend for your club uh, up against Mine Temple Tuhi and the football championships a place in the knockout stages is at stake. Actually, yeah, this is this is what we've been training for. It's crunch time now. It's a must-win game for us. And Tom, going into this, uh, like, what's the feeling like in Ballyporeen? How have you found the championship so far? I uh, think training is going very well. Like, the boys have been very positive, you know, and we've had good turnouts of training. And, you know, everything's been going pretty well. We have a new coaching staff in this year, and the boys seem to have taken to them very well. We have a lot of young lads in there now. And training is, there's a good buzz now training at night. And who's training you this year? We've got Kevin Mulcahy, he's a lad from Cork, the Cork side there, and we've um, Mark Mark Eaton then doing our certain conditioning, and both of the lads are well got by the players now, and players seem to be taken to them very well. Mm. And you have a lot of dual players as well, because uh, Shkina Rinki is uh, the Holland club there. Oh, sure, they're all, you could say nearly man for man, they're all playing hurling, like, you know, so... It is tough going, like they're out every weekend, but it's just the same for every club, I guess, this time of the year now. Yeah, I suppose they're enjoying it. Uh, they are, but they want games, don't they? Isn't that what they all say? Look, and they're playing every weekend now, so I know it's tough these conditions now, the winter's coming in. But look, they're, they're, they're the business end of the championship now, skiing as well, they're in the quarter final, and that's on the weekend after this, so they're training way hard, and that's where they want to be. Yeah, and looking at it, I suppose, from the outside, um, your most well-known player is, you know, probably the face of Tipperary football, Connor Sweeney, the captain of uh, the Tip Senior team for the last number of years. You know, what does he bring to your team? Asher Khan, the Khan you see on TV is the Khan that turns up every night of training with us as well. Like, he's a class act. He brings on the young fellas no end and... So he trains hard, as hard as anyone else to stay, you know, and he, he gives it everything and he does, he's not one for trying anyway. And he's encouraging to the younger lads. We have a good few younger lads, as I said, coming through and he's just a positive influence to have around the place at all times, you know. You did great celebrating when um, they won that Munster final in 2020. It was something else to have the captain. That was great. It was only a pity that was locked down, but look, the celebrations are well documented. It was fabulous for the village to have the captain of the, the tip team bringing the cup through the village, you know, that night. It was unbelievable. 
it's tough in South Tip, I suppose, because like you're a football and parish really with Connor Sweeney there as the main man. But the football in South Tip is so competitive at the best of times. And like you have commercials there and you've all see a lot of clubs don't win the silverware they might in other divisions. Yeah, I know it's tough going now, and even like you've other teams in the south, like Kill on the day could beat anyone. You've Kill Sheehan going very well, they're strong, they've a good young team there as well. So, like, you know, there's a lot of teams in the south try to win silverware is very hard in the south division with teams like that that are stacked like that. And you have a chance here in this one, I suppose, Kill Sheehan, the dominant team in the group, but uh, mind temper too here, there now, and you know, they're, they're a strong side. It's a, it's a, it's going to be a great game. And it is. We played them last year now, and they're a big physical team, and they have plenty of football, and they're going well in the hurling as well, you know, and so a rising ship lifts all tides, as they say. So they're confident on both fronts, and they'll be coming into this game looking for a win. They'll, they'll see us as a scalp they can take, you know. So we'll have to be at our best to try and get over them. When you're um, playing so far, how, how have you found it, really? You know, do you think that you've clicked into top gear, or... You know, is there more there? Can you do so this weekend? I know, I, th I think there's definitely more in us, you know. We've, I suppose our training this year, there's a lot of, with the new new management team coming in, there's been a lot of kind of new, we'll say new structures to training and new structures to our play. And it's just slow. Well, it's developing, you know, game by game. And you can see it in training, but I suppose it's different on a match day to try and bring it to the field. But that's what we're striving for. And look, the boys are they're buying into what's happening. And we haven't clicked this yet, I don't think, even though we don't we do good enough performance against Kill Sheelan. Our two goals, two soft goals we left in. The last day, I don't think we clicked at all. So we'll be hoping to obviously click now again on Sunday and get the win. Mm. And uh, like uh, mine, a good club as well, Connor Bow there with a lot of experience with tip. They have a lot of good players. Well, they have, and they've Liam England now over them as well, like and so we all know what he knows about football. So they're they're a good footballing team. They'll be there thereabouts. Do you know they give anyone a rattle? And with Ballyporeen, is uh, is the vibes, you know, something that it's grown, do you find in in uh Ballyporeen or you know, is this team how far away are they from you know being at their maximum? I suppose from what we've seen in the championship to date. They're, they have a small bit to go yet, like, you know, but I think it's just a matter of one little thing that could click with them and then they could just fall into place, you know. The, all the signs are there. It's just one little spark is all it'll take, I think, to get them to get them motoring properly, you know. They're a good young team. Like, the, there's a good mixture there as well of some a few older lads. And geez, they all give it, they give it their all, you know, and every training session, every match. So you can't ask any more from them, really, you know. Yeah, and in your own role, how has it been being chair of the club over the last while uh, with COVID and everything? Have you been very busy or what way has it been? Oh, well, I suppose I'm lucky here in Valley Perrine. We have a secretary and I say she could run the country. In Mag O'Donoghue, she does most of the groundwork, we'll say. You know, I just get the odd phone call here and there and say yes or no. That's kind of my role, to be honest. Meg kind of runs everything. And, I, and the whole committee, you know, have been very good, to be honest. Because it's only my... I only took the job last year. This is only my second year, and I suppose last year was kind of a non-runner as well, you know. So yeah. this year now has been a bit more structured to this year now, all right. So I suppose we, we kind of knew when we'd be playing and when we'd be training and league games. We had a league game like last year. The championship was kind of over before it started, really, to be honest, you know. Mm. Yeah. I know I have a good, good, good team around me now, and they kind of take the pressure off. Yeah, it's a difficult time really being involved as an officer of the club and, you know, making sure that the players are on the field and that everything is done to, you know, the rights of what it should be. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, look, you have to do the return to play protocols and you have to keep all the paperwork on, to keep all the paperwork proper, like, you know, and like, you know, like I said again, Meg is pretty good at that stuff and so look, we all have to do our bit. That's the way it is and I suppose the same in every club, to be honest, isn't it? And I suppose it's up to the players now to perform on Sunday. Yeah, which I've no doubt they'll they'll give it their all, as they always do, you know, and hopefully we'll come out the right side of the result. Yeah, so what kind of game can we expect, finally? Well, mine, I suppose, we'd like to 
try and move the ball as best we can, you know, not move it out wide without giving too much away, you know. We'd, we'd like to, it'd be a tough game, like they're a big team. We, we just don't really want to go down the middle with them and mix it with them, you know, because I suppose we wouldn't have the physical physicality they'd have, but we have a lot of speed and a lot of skillful players. We'd be hoping to get on the ball in favourable positions, try and do some damage that way, you know. So joining me now is Inda Everard, selector with Mind Temple Tui. Inda, this campaign for ye, um, you know, everything is on the line Sunday against Ballyporeen. That's right, Stephen. Yeah, we played them actually last year and they beat us by six points. Um, we both have uh, two points each uh, so far in the group, group stages and it's a winner-take-all game on Sunday. So hopefully after on Sunday evening we'll be in the county quarter-final in senior football. Yeah, and you're a club really that is progressing all the time. You were close against Kilsheelan, and uh, it's a chance now, another game, which I'm sure the players will be delighted about. That's right. Yeah, against Kilsheelan, we lost 112 to 10 points. Um, Gifted me one, two starters for us after 10 minutes. The lads kind of settled down well into the game. Uh, we're down a few players that day. Gerald O'Connor was missing, uh, Shane Lowe was missing, John Cochran had to go off after 20 minutes. But well, we settled well into the game and we brought it back to within three points. And, you know, they fought very hard to the end. So we were kind of very proud of them after that game because they didn't throw in a towel. Uh, it looked kind of going away from it to start. But uh, for a finish, no, they, they really quitted themselves very well. Mm, and uh, looking at this one, Ballyporeen are going to be tough opponents, really, with Connor Sweeney, the main star they have. That's right. He's a reigning all-star. Uh, last year, we played him in... Uh, in the correspondent fixture, uh, they beat us by six points. Uh, felt that the boys had some regret after that game. They didn't really play to the potential that they, you know, and really they gifted them a couple of uh, soft scores and a few genuine goal scoring chances went straight that day. Yeah, I suppose uh, Connor is the big name in tip football, but uh, you've one of the big stars, the up and coming stars now at the minute. I mean, in uh, Connor Bow lining out for UCC in the Hurling Championship, one of the mainstays of your Hurling team and tip under 20 teams. And uh, like he's a class footballer with David Power earlier this year. And like, it's great to have a player of that calibre, I presume. That's right. Yeah, he wasn't called into the, to the senior Hurling team. So um, he was asked at Christmas to win by David Power and Paddy Christie. And uh, look, he went in. He, he's a very good footballer, but he also likes the football as well. And... Uh, Ended up playing. He didn't really play county minor or county under twenty one because he was tied with the with the hurlers though for those years. But ended up playing senior football this year, which is a very good personal achievement for him. Uh, he lined out against Kerry in the senior championship, and yeah, he he's a very good club man in fairness as well. He he really pushes things on and train. Uh, but we're not short of uh, good footballers. He's not the only one. Groda Connor is a very good footballer. Tom Mead was also on the Tipperary senior panel this year. Uh, Shane Lowe, obviously, John Cochran is back after a few years away. Uh, yeah, so there's plenty of plenty of talent there at the moment. Mm, a player like uh, Cochran coming into that team is huge as well. He's got a lot of experience. That's right. Yeah, he was on the tip under 21s that won the first ever Munster final uh, back ten years ten years ago plus and. Um, Look, he has plenty of experience. He played minor 21 and senior in probably both codes growing up. Um, he, he gave the last two or three years away on travels. Uh, but he's back. He's a very fit fella. He, he competes in these Ironman uh, competitions. And so he, you know, every day he nearly trains. So he's, he's a massive plus back to us. Jeez, that's brilliant to have an Ironman in your ranks. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, Look, he lives for it. Uh, that's he. He had a bucket list, it's supposed to take over the years, and he he went away to different places, and you know he cycled from he cycled from Mallon Head, I think, to Mil to Mizzen Head. He's done the Inca trails. He's uh, he's been all over the place at this stage. But look, he's back now. He he gave last couple of years teaching you know, over in China, and uh, he's back with us. And uh, look, he's 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 a great addition, obviously. Yeah, you can't buy the experience that someone like him brings in. It's like Seamus Hennessy for Killer One McDonough's or, you know, someone that comes back and, and has seen a lot of ways of life and knows the value of Gaelic games. That's right. Yeah, and he's, he's very settled now as well. He's, you know, he's in his early 40s and uh, he's, you know, huge experience. 
And he was a fella that a lot of the young lads would have looked up to. Uh, you know, the likes of Conor Bowen, Grow the Conor, they were the, you know, John was operating at senior level at that stage and when they were, I suppose, under 12. And, you know, down the field, obviously, he was our local hero at the time. So, you know, as I said, he's a, he's a great addition back for us, you know. So, hopefully now he'll be able to produce the goods again on Sunday. Yeah, and like you're a great dual club, really, and one of the best facilities all across Tipperary. And uh, like it's a club that really needs a lift, like and win one game, and all of a sudden the whole parish rises. That's right, Stephen. Yeah, we were supposed to win the county final in 2014 Intermediate Hurling. Uh, we gave a couple of years senior after that, and we came back down Intermediate around 2017. We were beaten by the eventual uh, county champions in the latter stages, I suppose, since. And last year we got it, we got back to a county final at intermediate level. And um, hopefully we can push on one more this year. Uh, at senior football, we won the county intermediate final in 2018. And 2019 didn't go so well for us. But last year we, we competed very well. Uh, we beat Art Finnan, ran Bally Preen close. We also ran Lockmore close. So look, we we're hoping to push on again this year now. Mm. And winning this game Sunday against Ballyporeen, like that, that could be the catalyst to you know just kickstart the rest of the year in the club. That's right, George. The winner take all game. We had a very good win against Aero Um We beat them one fourteen to nine points in Borla, and uh, the boys were very good on the day. Uh, really, fought, you know, ran ran themselves into the ground that day, and. Um, then obviously we, we 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 like as bottom seeds we we had faced Kilshiel who were top seeds and look we kind of admired them I suppose for the first ten minutes until we settled down and then you know we came out of that game we were fairly confident of a you know of pushing on more in the senior football if, in terms of senior football and hopefully on Sunday now we'll be able to get over Bally Preen uh, the same the better by six points last year uh, so we hope to close the gap this year. Mm. And uh, like I know you've been playing for years, you've lots of people involved in the backroom team as well there. And Lee England in his manager, he's he brings a big experience now as well to it. Yeah, that's right. Lee has played himself so I bought codes. He was on the tip panel, I think, in 2006. He played centre field for Tip Senior Footballers for a number of years. Um, the boys are really bought into him. Uh, <clears throat> very good man manager, very passionate about the club, actually. Um I know he gave an example of that would be he gave two weeks on holidays in Castle Gregory this year and he, he came back up for training on four occasions during those holidays. So it'll just show you the level of equipment that he's uh, that he's given to us so far. Uh, he's also a very good man manager and uh, you know he's he's implemented a style and the boys are fairly you know, it took him a while to accustom to it last year, but I think this year they're a lot lot more comfortable with it. So yeah, look our preparation is going very well so far on you. Great stuff. And uh, just finally, in there, what kind of game will we expect between Mind Temple Tuhi and Ballyporeen? Well, sure, the conditions are, you know, have changed. Obviously, it's, it's probably you know, modern day football. It's You have those walls across the 45 yard line. Uh, you know, retention of possession is massive. Obviously, kick out strategy is huge. Uh, we'll be hoping to break the tackles. You know, a goal, obviously, this time of year is worth maybe four points, even five points. Uh, look, it's going to be very tight. Um, I'd say very close, you know, similar to last year. But look, hopefully, our lads are, have prepared very well. Uh, there's a very good atmosphere in the, in the camp at the moment. Uh, high numbers of training. And hopefully, I think, you know, hopefully, I think we can get over the line. Well, you're very welcome to Leahy Park here in Cashel. It's a nice afternoon at the moment here. The sun is out here in Leahy Park at the moment here. It has been quite wet and quite windy, though, in uh, the last hour or so here in Cashel and across mid Tipperary as well as West Tip. And uh, we're hoping that it'll stay dry here. There's quite a strong wind blowing from uh, left to right as we're looking at it here in front of us as uh, the teams get ready for today's game. Round three of the Tipperary Football Championship. Mine Temple Tuhi over to my left going through their warm-up drills and over to my right it is Ballyporeen. I'm Stephen Gleeson. Samantha Lambert is alongside me here today and Sam, round three. You know, one team lives, one team dies now today in the championship. 
Yeah, I suppose it makes it all the more exciting, um, the game today, and I'm sure it'll be quite intense. It'll be a physical battle, and it's all to play for out there. So the two teams will be giving it absolutely everything. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how everything will work out. Uh, Bell Perrine and Mind Temple Tui, um, both two, two good teams, and I'm sure they'll, they'll battle it out here today now. And Sam, getting the win here is, you know, it's huge for both these teams. And we're looking, I suppose, at uh, the firepower of Connor Sweeney for Bally Poreen in particular. But looking at the mine team and they're just getting ready up there. They did a good warm up drill maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes ago. And they've just gone back over now getting a drink of water. Last minute words of advice there. They are going to come with all guns blazing here. They've, you know, Garota Connor there, Connor Bow, a lot of firepower and a lot of strength. Yeah, definitely. They're a huge physical side, and um, like you mentioned already, Connor Sweeney there is going to be pivoted for Belly Perrine. Like, and you know, he's he is their key player, and um, all focus will probably be on him for Belly Perrine as it is um, for Tipperary as well. He's their key forward, and um, if they can keep him quiet, I'm sure they'll have half the battle done for themselves. But um, look, they've Belly Perrine have, have other players as well to to look at and mine will have to look after them as well so it'll be a huge task and i'm sure they're ready for it both sides and it's um the weather has cleared off now and i'm sure it's hopefully it'll stay stay dry and it'll be a tough battle yeah and having the the league tables and everything in front of us here is going to be important because this game can change it starts kilsheedan plus 11 and uh, it is mine plus three on the scoring side of things here but um like the players when you're on the field of play you know yourself that it is about winning at the time and we just have a scoring update here at the moment from the other game it is a rogue and a carty one eight till she and kick cash five points at the second water break and uh, that makes it interesting if kill Sheelan are losing that game as well that, that, you know the four teams in this are all player like a rogue i suppose playing for pride really as well yeah, definitely. Look, um, I suppose any day you go out, you always want to win and you always want to give your best performance. And I think um, these championship matches are, are no different. Um, and look, everyone's out, out there ready to go and um, happy to be playing in comparison, I suppose, to this time last year or whatever when people weren't getting the games. So um, 60 minutes of uh, football here now to look forward to and it'll be enjoyable, I'm sure. Great stuff. And... Uh we're getting ready to go here. Mine are out on the field of play. And we're just going to call over for a second here, uh, Jonathan Collins. So, Jonathan, this is all to play for in this group here with Aero Ganacarthy currently beating Kilsheelan in Borla. Yeah, it makes things very interesting, Stephen. I think that, um, uh, as you said, it's going to come down really to the to the, to the the scoring difference at the end of the day now. And um, it's all to play for for, both, for Mind Temple Tuohy and Ballyporeen as it happens here now as well because they'll have to watch the, the scoring differences as well against Kilsheel and uh, for, uh, in the head-to-head -head against them as well. So it's uh, it's interesting. So we have our calculators out here, Stephen, so it'll be interesting for the next hour or so. Good stuff. Stay close to us, Jonathan. We'll need all that information as this game progresses. The other game taking place right now in Borlahan and we're set and ready to go here and the ball is in straight away it's just knocked down out there mine coming out to gather it there and it is a uh, one out there by hamill who just lives off that ball outside him now out to tom mead who's just trying to work it up the field here as a uh, mine coming the attack and uh, we'll go through both sides as uh, the game progresses here as this ball is just hitting along now low and in there rushing brennan in there a good steady player for bally in defense as they just try and work that ball back out now and holding it up on the half back line currently tommy sweeney in possession now tommy just working it out here along the field as uh, it is bally Purine trying to create a nearly attack here the wind Quite strong in their favour in this first half here as this ball is sent in long. Nice one in there now by John O'Callaghan all the way in. A good take in there by Thomas Vaughan, but it's just overrun. And uh, that win's going to be a big factor, Sam. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think he might have overkicked it there. Small bit seems to, conditions seem to be a bit slippery. Um, he went out over the inline there, but um, they're patient with the ball. They wait for the run to be made inside. And when the run was made, he gave it just... Or slightly overkicked it, uh, as you said. The, the breeze is a bit strong, but I'm sure they'll settle into it and they'll they'll realise that. So, keeper gets ready for this one here, and uh, Oren Lloyd in goals down there, just 
preparing for this here as uh, he just lines up to see what's on. Go short with this out to the corner back now. Time and room here to try and build. Will Ballyporeen try and box them in there and just try and make the most of that? But uh, it is just uh, a nice steady play. And now it's been lost by Sweeney here. Tommy Sweeney feeds in this ball inside and it's a loose one in there and the keeper has to come out and light. Kicks this one out, but it's loose again now. Out of here as far as Fernando O'Sullivan. Back out into centre field. John O'Callaghan now does well. Feeds that ball on again. Away they go. Oshin Brennan now. Brennan with this and sends it over the far side of the field. It is Ballyporeen trying to work an early score here. Just trying to wait for the right time to kick this ball in. Nice one in from Christy English, but back out as quick. And... Belly Poreen still just trying to get that ball and create a scoring chance here. They've worked it over here this side now into Lines and Lines feeds it outside him here. Out to Reno Callahan and the shot comes in from O'Callaghan and out and wide. Yeah, I suppose, look, you can see there from um, the, that play that mine are very defensive. They have a lot of players back. Uh, Belly Poreen are trying to work it around and um, they set up, they switched the play over to the far side and uh, took the shot, but it went well right. Short one again out to the corner back here. Mine just trying to build here against the wind here. Just trying to hold that ball and gather possession out the far side of the field here as uh, Pierce Mead, the captain, just loses out now. And it is again Tommy Sweeney influential early on here for Ballyporeen as they try and create. But he's taken, it's been too much taken out of it out there. And it is going to be a free out. And away we go here. Mine trying to work it now. Nice and fast play here. Work it up towards the 65. All the way up here. It's Garoto O'Connor who sends a nice ball over the far side here. Chance coming in here now. And it's just held up out there. And still mine in possession. As he sends it back in the middle of the field. But again he's just lost out there. And just no clean possession there. Being won as Ballyporeen come out. And it is going to be Fernando O'Sullivan who wins a free out for his team here. As uh, this one is just kicked quick now in towards the middle here now into Owen Morrissey. Morrissey moves it on the far side of the field again and it's over there towards Christy English. English nice steady pair of hands there as he works it in the middle now into Oshin Brennan. Brennan just holding that ball up nice and steady now. Mine filtering a lot of players back behind the ball here as they just try and keep possession now and it's sent in and it's loose and it's scattered in there by the corner forward Mark Ryan and Mark Ryan has a free out here. So taken quickly now just send up along the line here well took up there by Connor Bow Bow works it on up along the line again up here towards Garota Connor O'Connor on again here now on the far side onto Vaughan and Vaughan over there and mine just trying to create something here they have a free in Sam yeah well work free there there's a good few slaps been thrown um, very physical game start off with huge intensity and um, the mine crowd are trying to get up behind them and keep them um, keep them under pressure, seem to under pressure for the kickouts, but um, they'll settle on that, I'm sure, at some point. So, holding it up here, it is going to be a free about to be struck by uh, John Hassey there, and uh, he just stands over this one. And ref just waiting here to see what's going to happen. It is the keeper that's coming up to strike this here, so Lloyd all the way up the field here against the wind here. Good, well able to place the ball here, so. Nice steady keeper places this one here. That wind is deceptively strong though. It's blowing back out towards where we are here in the stand. And uh, quite a, a cross field blow on it when there is a gust of wind here. So you'll have to get this spot on if it's to go over the bar here. A difficult kick in difficult conditions here at Leahy Park. Here we go. He sends it in. Oh, superb. You can hear the supporters enjoy that one. Yeah, great score there. Um Hard, hard to kick against, I suppose, that wind, and it, it curled in then in the end. Um, so it's a good start from mine to Matui get a score on the board. Keeper gets ready again now, and uh, Mikey Sweeney there placing that ball just steady in goals for them. Kicks this one out, goes short. Good pair of hands shown out there by Reno Callahan. Callahan feeds that ball on again now onto John O'Callaghan. Down the line here, takes the challenge from Connor Bow. Holds that ball though, does well to hold on to it. Bow challenged fairly though, and the ball just worked on over the other side of the field now on towards Tommy Sweeney and in the middle and they have it up now with Oshin Brennan. Brennan tearing in towards that mind temple to his defence now. Ball just held up again. Bally Poreen Yet to score in this, Mind Temple 2, he would have pointed a good from that free from the keeper as the ball drops in on him and he does well to knock it outside but it's a, a loose one and it's gathered out there now by Christy English and a shot, a loose one comes in there and that one has just somehow gone over the bar and the ball is just skidding away from players all the time. Yeah, it seems to be um, slippery enough out there, the 
the ball seems to be getting out of people's hands you can't keep keep hold of it but I will take an option there heading and passing it over the bar you don't often see it but um, it was the best option there and I suppose they're just trying to work it in there and make sure of it really at that stage yeah definitely and I suppose look they're playing with the wind so they can take the long range as well but it's important to work it in and they have gone short with this one mine and it's played back inside and the ref is calling for this and the ref is holding it up in there Sam yeah, um, mine seem to be under a bit of pressure with their kickouts. To be fair, the last few ones they've gone short, and uh, Ballyperine seem to be pressing on it quite a bit, and they've lost them in the tackle. So, uh, something that they're going to have to look at at the water break, maybe. Here we go, ball thrown in there, and it's won by mine as they try and work it out quickly now out of the fence here, all the way up the feed. Hassey trying to work it out now on as far as Dunica Dunn, who feeds that ball back inside now, and away they go. Hamill moves it on quickly again on now to Bo Bo in centre field now holding it up steady player over the far side of the field they go with it now it is mine just trying to calmly build an attack here low over the far side as well they're still just holding that ball up now good possession from them up there just making sure that they do the right thing all the time here Kieran Light just working that ball back in the middle Tom Mead now coming through me just holding it up. He's going to have a go from long range. Sends it in. It's going to hop in there loosely. And the keeper comes out and does well to gather that. Mikey Sweeney in goals today for Ballyporeen. And he just calmly works that ball back out as uh, they try and build again. A lot of passes, incisive ones now. Long kick looking for Connor Sweeney in there. But the ball beats him to it. And it is the cornerback for mine who comes out to gather it. Now this ball worked on again here. Chris Lawler moves it on again and it is mine again trying to build now from defence. Tom Mead goes the far side of this and a bit of pressure put on there but does well to hold the ball over the far side. It is going to be a free. Shane Lowe did very well there to just keep possession and win a free here and just relieve the pressure off mine temper two he here. A pint a piece here in uh, this tense encounter in the county football championship. Round three. Here we go. Mine in possession just around centre field. The main Attacking forward has it now. It's Connor Bow. Off he goes here. Holding up that ball. Works it on again here. Trying to move it back in the middle of the field. And they have it back in now as far as Kieran Lloyd. Over the far side this time. Mine playing a possession game here in the middle now. Hamill in possession. Former county senior hurling panellist, of course, as well. A good player uh, back in the day for Tip and played a number of league games back in but a really good footballer really skillful as well they're building that ball they're working it inside now they're gone as far as the 30 out here we go again in from Hassey inside and a loose one kicked in and this shot comes all the way in and just tails out that wind is very hard to kick into yeah it definitely is and I think they'll have to just work it back into the scoring range and um, it'll be a lot closer in this half being against the wind for mine simple too so just have to take the better options I suppose and work it around into a scoring position that's that they can kick over easily. Ballyporeen working it out again from the fence up towards their 65 now. Away they go here, trying to build on this. Here it's in to Reno Callahan. O'Callaghan well, again now moves that attack on over the far side of the field. Christy English, good solo from him here all the way down, heading for the 21. He kicks it in, a long ranger. A oh, beautiful score by English. Did a right thing and just looked up before he struck. Yeah, great score and they worked it up there from the, the corner back up all the way up and it was well taken, a good option and um, they seem to be a small bit more freer up in the, the Belperine side of things rather than the Mine Temple too. He didn't get back in droves like they have been in the last number of minutes so um, it'll be interesting to see now how this kick out will go. Yeah, and you'd imagine shooting from the 45 is a strong option at the moment. Definitely, yeah. Uh, especially with that kind of a wind behind you, you, you have um, an extra uh, few metres. So. Ball worked out by mine now, and they just have a free out just on their 45 here. It's uh, Brennan back as far as uh, Warren Lloyd, the keeper, back. They go again and build slowly onto Hamill now. Hamill working it out from defence now, just on his own 45 now. Challenge comes in there from Reno Callahan, and he's forced to move it on. Keeps going now, it's Hamill up along, up towards Bo, and the ball has just been spilt there, but the challenge came in on uh, Tossie Hamill there, and he has a free, and again, they're content to just hold that ball up, and I suppose they'll just try and work the clock here somehow, even in this first half, to slow it down. Yeah, you'd imagine so, I suppose, look, they're playing against the wind, and um, they're trying to slow it down, they're working it up, I think they need to break the line a small bit faster, though, I think they're they're taking their time about trying to break the line, and Belle Preen are getting their players back and marking them tightly, so... I think if they could break the line a bit faster that they'd, they'd get a few opportunities for scoring. 
Here they go. It is Mind Temple 2 this time. Mark Ryan showing a bit of pace here now. Up towards the 65. Goes back in the middle again. Connor Bow now. Holding it up on his own 65 here. Operating kind of in a sweeper type position. Able to break and go attack as needed. They've worked it over here now as far as Dunn. Dunnica Dunn. Back in the middle towards Hamill again now. Steady play. On to Mark Ryan. Here they go. Up along the field now. Working it up. Garota Connor in possession now. Good player for Tip as well over the last few years. And, you know, good dual player as well from Mind Temple too. They have it in the middle now. In as far as Tom Mead and back outside they go again here. And just trying to work it in towards Connor Bow. Bow now. Here he comes. Looking to see what's on. Takes on his marker. Off he goes there. Past uh, Connor Sweeney and goes over the far side of the field. Mind still in possession. Doing well in the early stages here. Two points for Ballyporeen, one for Mind Temple Two. But they're well in it here, playing against a strong wind here. This ball being held up by John Hassey now. Has to come back to Hamill. Hamill outside. Works it on again. Over to Mark Ryan. Going to take on the cornerback. Goes back inside again. And it is John Hassey now. Steady, patient play here. Corner forward comes again. Mark Ryan. Oh, the pass is just loose and it breaks outside. And it's up to Joe Grady now to sprint back and try and control it now. They have it up towards Tom Mead. Off he goes. The centre back for mine now. Bursting two, two, three players and takes a hard shoulder there. Does well to hold the ball. Works it outside again. Over here towards Mark Ryan now. Mine just patient play from them at the moment. Still not able to break through that final barrier from Ballyporeen and it's a loose one and Ballyporeen have turned it over and away comes Connor Sweeney with the ball now up towards the 65 Connor Sweeney in possession sends it in long now oh nice ball inside looking for the corner forward keeper comes out though and the keeper does really well Lloyd just holds that ball red exactly what was happening there out to Tom Mead and they work it back up the line here again now all the way up here towards uh, looking for John here the full forward but it's one back in centre field by Ballyporeen and away they go. John O'Callaghan on again to Reen O'Callaghan now. Reen goes back in the middle again in towards uh, Oshin Brennan this time. And Ballyporeen just try and build again here. Pressure cooker here. It's round three of the championship. It is Ballyporeen two points. Mind Tempatui one point. And wholehearted effort from both sets of players here at the moment as Ballyporeen come in the attack now. Long ball sent in towards Thomas Fawn in there. Holding it up again, trying to get the ball to the right man. He has it now. It's Connor Sweeney. He sends it in long all the way to the left boot. Oh, fantastic. The all star, the temporary captain, the scorer here now. Yeah, excellent score there by Connor Sweeney. Well worked around, I suppose. He um, had overkicked it there at one point, but he um, made up for it there. Great score off his left foot and um, a great score again for, for Belly Perrine since it puts him three points to one up. So they go short again with this now. Working it out again, out towards the corner back. Here they go, trying to take it out from the fence here now. It is Mind Temple Tuhi. Patient play, three points for Ballyporeen, one for Mind Temple Tuhi. That peach of a kick from Connor Sweeney, the latest scorer in this game now. But it is Mine on the attack. They have it up the feed now, up towards the half forward line now. As Hassey tries to hold that ball up again and they just try and attack here, this Mine. Half forward line just building here. They've a lot of numbers up there now. Four or five players back as far as Hamill. Hamill just holding the ball and moving it on again and waiting for the chance here. Patient build up from mine, but they've just one point on board. They need to get another couple of scores here. It's worked inside. Bo feeds it into Hassey inside now. John just goes to ground and he's been turned over and it is going to be a free out for Ballyporeen again and Tommy Sweeney gathers the ball and they're going to have a free out now and all mine's hard work gone to waste as Ballyporeen have this free out and they take it quickly now. Sent out the field here now looking for Fernando Sullivan. On again to Connor Sweeney. Inside now. Away they go on the attack here this time now. On to Dara Lines. Lines feeds it on again here now to Reno Callahan. Reno Callahan with the left boot kicks it into the corner, into the far corner now. Looking for Thomas Vaughan in there. Oh, nice turn here. Holds that ball up, looking to try and get a score. Feeds it back outside him here now onto Fernando Sullivan. The ball is in the back of the net. 
Oh, stylish finish with the left boot. One tree to one point, and that has really rocked this game. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I suppose it was a great finish to the, the first quarter there. They'll be delighted with that. Uh, going into the first water break, one tree to one point up to, to Belly Perrine. Uh, well worked around. I think they're starting to settle on their scores a small bit. They're starting to uh, take the better options now and uh, work the ball in. Um, and they seem to be breaking the tackle. I, getting through my and Petuita a little bit better um, than they were at the start of the game. Oh, a sensational goal. 1-3 for Ballyporeen. My and Petuita, one point. Jonathan Cullen, the PRO of Tipperary GA, is here beside us with an update on what's going on over in Borlahan in the other game in this group. Yeah, the, the game is over in Borlahan, Stephen, and it's finished. Um, it's finished 1-9 uh, to 7 points in favour of Aero Ganacarty. So that puts Air Organic Harty now on three points. So as it stands at the moment now, Air Organic Harty would qualify in second place and Kilsheel and Kilcash would be topping the group on four points. Air Organic Harty have three now as it stands, Kilsheel have four. So it's going to come down to see what happens. Interesting to see what happens in the rest of this game now at this point. Red stuff, Jonathan Cullen here alongside us, PRO of the Tip County Board. So that's a huge turnaround in that game. Aero Ganacarty beat Upper Church in the first round of the Hurling, faded badly against Hurla Sarsfields, came back and, you know, rallied too late to take on Drum in the Hurling. So they're in relegation in that, but boy, they're going to try everything to get into the quarters in football. Yeah, Jesus, why wouldn't they? Um, ever since. Uh they're going to throw everything at it and um, I'm sure the this game will tell a lot now as well for the results going forward um, and Ballyperine will be looking for another strong 15 minutes with the wind while they have it um, seems to be a huge advantage at the minute well taken scores there by Conor Sweeney there in the first half off his left boot settled himself well so my number two will be looking to get a few back now and try to break the tackle I suppose in this in, in, in this quarter they haven't been doing it they haven't been really penetrating through the, the Belly Perrine defence so they're looking to do that now going into this uh, second quarter and they're able to work the ball up grand up until the half forward line but they just meet a wall then and you know Belly Perrine break fast get down we saw Connor Sweeney kick a fantastic point with the ball turned over nice and quick from Belly Perrine so like it's hard for mine yeah definitely look I think that's very important to if you're going to break you have to break fast um, and not give the other team a chance to get back and defend uh, properly so um, that's what they'll be looking to do I suppose in this, in this quarter is to break fast and try to get a few scores up on the board so we're ready to restart here on Lloyd, getting ready to boot this one out the field here. Cornerback is in place, but he's been picked up by the Ballyporeen defender, so he has to go along. Sends it out the middle. Oh, fine fetch out there by Connor Bow. Absolutely great catch, of course. Hit seven points for UCC in the Hurling Championship last Monday night down in Cork. And uh, great dual player, definitely one on Colin Bonner's radar, and of course is uh, part of... David Powers football panel as well as uh, Bo is on the ball at the moment here now. Away they go on the attack. Garrod O'Connor now working it in there. Treve them on him and Garrod O'Connor has won himself a free in there just outside uh, the 21. It's uh, probably a tricky kick in the wind, Sam, but it is straight enough in front of the post to have a go. Yeah, definitely. Um, Lloyd has come back up to take this free. He scored the first one there. The only score that when Temple 2 have scored um, in this game yet. So he's back up again and looking to put this over again. I think that was a good uh, pass to play there by my Temple 2. They're taking on the players a small bit more and um, you need to see that rather than going over and back to field. I suppose hand passing it. It's, they need to try to break that tackle, take on their player and look, they drew the free that time. So that's what they're going to look to do in the next, the next few um, possessions going forward. So here we go, keeper lining it up here, just places the ball nicely for himself here. Referee moves back and uh, linesman just behind him as well. It's the keeper for mine who kicks it high, long and over the bar. More or less the same place as the first one went over the bar. That's an excellent kick by Oren Lyon. Yeah, great score. Um, Goal is just making his way back down there, good score. Uh, they needed it, two points to one three, so they, they need another score on the board. Away. Come Bally Purine, down the feed here now with a quick one on to Seamus O'Callaghan who feels that ball out the feed towards 
John O'Callaghan and they've worked it all the way up now to Fuenon O'Sullivan and he just curls that one in somehow and that's a really good score because uh, it was a very acute angle yeah brilliant score well taken he's out near near the sideline um, very well taken score and it worked them, them worked it well up from the from the kick out so um, they've got another one back and mine will be looking to to try and get another few scores on the board every time they go up they seem to uh, Bellaparine seem to respond I suppose that's a good good thing in a, in a team that they, they try and get the response each time so um, we've seen if mine Timple 2 we can respond to that again so mine just with a player down at the moment here Garoto Connor just receiving a bit of treatment looks like a back injury that uh, he just picked up in the last while they're just feeling it there about the hip and uh, the physio is on the field with him here keeper will just be holding up play for a minute and uh, like it'll suit mine probably just to count this first half down I mean it's up to Ballyporeen to make the most of that wind that they have at the moment and mine will have that strong advantage in the second half yeah look and look, the wind doesn't do it doesn't win it or lose a game for you either but it is has a small bit of an advantage there today and uh, we see him with a few of the kicks out um Oren took there from the goals for the freeze like they were tough tough enough and but he got both them over so it'll, it, it'll be important for Betty Perrine to make the most of it there in the first half here we go Lied again, long one out the field, two points for him so far for mine. Bally Purine on one four. Currently our coverage on Tip FM with thanks to Temple Two He Farm Machinery. We're live on the Tipperary GAA stream as well. And it is the FBD Insurance Tipperary Football Championship as uh, somehow Bally Purine stopped the mine attack and they have a free in now from just outside the 45. And it is their main man again, Connor Sweeney, who will kick this one right from the 45 with the wind at his back here Connor Sweeney about to strike this with that left boot of his as he sizes it up here now and takes a couple of steps and sends it on its way all the way in and all the way over the bar Connor Sweeney oh he's superb with that left boot to curl in with that wind behind him yeah definitely look he's an, an unbelievable player and um, we can see that there from his free taking he can take him from free he can take him um, from play as well and um, he's an all-rounder there he's working very hard he seems to be playing um, around the middle of the field rather than further in near the goal which mine Timber 2 are probably happier with being away from the goal as much as possible so um, he's an influential player now this one shot out as far as Connor Bow. he takes it now and works it out the field out the far side mine Timber 2 he on the attack trying to break quickly here now and they've done so over the far side of the field it's uh, Pierce Mee trying to work it in there and Away they go here now, trying to move that ball on, but it's just a loose pass out there. But uh, Kieran Lyde does well to control it. Somehow got there in time, and they have another free in now as uh, the Bally Purine defence just pounced on him as he was breaking through the middle. And another chance here for the keeper, and uh, he's a busy book, Lauren Lyde up and down the field. Yeah, he's coming up there for another another free kick, kind of same thing again, like. Um they took on the ball there that time again, Mount Miltui, and they they drew, uh, they got the free again. So I think that's what they're going to have to do for the the remainder of the game. They're going to have to just keep taking on the ball and um, taking on the man and try break the tackle. And we can see over the far side that Connor Bow is down injured currently for Mine Temple Tui. And, uh, you know, he is such a key player. Looks like a hamstring injury he has over there. He's so influential. They need him. Definitely. He's been. Um, Full of energy around the place, it's been huge intensity to the Mount Temple Tui team, and uh, he'd be a huge loss if he had to go off. So, here we go. This free about to be kicked here now. The keeper lines it up, and away he goes. And Lloyd sends it high and sends it over the bar. Ah, fantastic! And that is worth so much to a team, you know. It is really like uh, what Cluxton was doing with the dubs for so many years, yeah, definitely. I suppose. Uvergoli is the top scorer there at the minute for Mine Temple Tui, so we'll have to get Mine will have to look at it and get a few more forwards um, on the scoreboard. 1 5 playing 3 points. Mine had turned over Ballyporeen again, and away they go down the feed here this time now. Tom Mead feeds that ball in the middle now into Joe Grady. They've worked it over the far side of the field again here now on the attack. It's Pierce Mead once more showing a bit of inspiration for them as uh, they 
Oh, they've been turned over again over the far side. And that Ballyporeen half-back line is just a wall. They have a free out over there, the far side. And it seems to be four or five Ballyporeen players there that just won't let them break in past the 45. Yeah, they're very sticky um, and they're working very, very hard. They're on top of their players and um, they can't seem to get one to them too. They can't seem to get break through them. So um, they'll have to look at trying to work the ball in over them, maybe send it in over into the full forward line a bit sooner. Owen Morrissey now, they've worked it out along here all the way over to John O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan does well just to shake off his marker and away he goes now. The midfielder for Ballyporeen down the field, holding that ball up over the far side now. Lays it off to Christy English. English now, nice ball sent in by English all the way inside to the full forward line. Ball in there and uh, it is Owen Gorman just lucky, just pushes the attacker out of the way but uh, Ballyporeen have it back now and they're trying to Work this into a scoring position. They come inside here now and the kick comes in. It's a long range one this time. He's in high by Dara Lyons and Dara Lyons has a pint for Ballyporeen. Yeah, brilliant score. Look, um, mind you, we have everyone back bar one. Um, so it's hard enough to get a, to work a score and they have in the last number of occasions. So um, they're being very patient. They're getting it into a scoring position. They're working around the D and they're, they're taking their chances. So... Um, for the amount of defenders that are back, I suppose mine should be putting a bit more pressure on them and pushing out a bit sooner. Keeper gets ready again here. Goes out to the corner back with this one. Well took over there the far side of the field. Shane Lowe having a good game for them into Hamill inside now. Tassie Hamill just runs into a wall of red there, but uh, does well to move that ball back inside the line. Who slips and the keeper has to get up quick to retrieve this situation now. Feeds that ball on outside him here now. On to Mark Ryan and Mark Ryan is under pressure. But they have a free out and Ballyporeen felt they should have had a free in perhaps. But it is going to be a free out there for the Moyne Temple Tui corner back as he takes it quickly now. It's uh, Mark Ryan back to the goalkeeper here. Keeper on again now to Connor Bow. Bow up and moving about freely now since uh, he was down on the deck with that injury. But he is moving that ball on quick onto Hamill now. Hamill moves it on again. Garrod O'Connor. Three of their main players there just in position on that half-back line here. They brought it over towards Mark Ryan. Now Mark Ryan has been dispossessed. Good play by O'Callaghan for Ballyporeen. But Mark Ryan does well to recover. And uh, Ballyporeen line insisting that that ball was thrown. But uh, play moves on here. And away we go up the field. And Ballyporeen have turned it over. Loose ball sent down towards the corner. Looking in there to uh, find... Dara lines, but uh, the ball beat him. It is going to be a line ball for mine. Yeah, an exciting passage to play there. Um, the possession was vital there at times, and um, Bellaprene had won it back, and now they're back back in the mind in two hands. Um, and now Bellaprene have it back again. So uh, high intensity here, and loads of energy being shown. So it'll be an exciting encounter there for the next few minutes. And it is Burley Purine who have won a free in there. Loads of tackling and the challenges and oh, this is just wholehearted yeah. effort from both sets of players here. They're absolutely wrecked on the field. A lot of players just receiving a bit of treatment and uh, like you just want them to, to get through this round robin series without any serious injuries. But uh, players are obviously finding it tough going hurling and football because uh, they're playing both. Yeah, look, every weekend I suppose they have something, so the bodies have to give at some point, and um, recovery is incredibly important um, for the players when they're playing such high-intensity games and um, you know, physical encounters, so uh, it's important that they're doing their recovery. Here we go, the free about to be struck, it is Sweeney, and Sweeney sends it in all the way in from the 45, a great kick again by Connor Sweeney, and uh, look, he's just, he's the difference really at the moment. Definitely, look, he's, there's not too many frees he's not going to score. So um, I think the last two or three frees have been from the very, very similar positions and he's clocked them out over without even looking at the, without even looking at the goal. So um, he's going to keep tipping them over, one seven to three points to mine Temple Tui. So it's starting to sway one way already. Keeper gets ready. Lloyd has to go out towards centre field here and it's one out there now as uh, Garoda O'Connor moves that ball on nice and fast here. Back out. The feed, it's Moyne Temple too. Mark Ryan now has it on to Mead. And away they go now, trying to take the challenge there. It's John Hassey, does very well now. And he has that ball up the feed here now. They're trying to come on the attack here. And a good tackle out there, it looked like, from the corner back. Noel Vaughan, but uh, ball goes out over the line. Taken for Ballyporeen. And ref is calling that one back. And I think the ref just has uh, gone over to check with the linesman there. Linesman has the flag up, Sam. 
Yeah, at the Moyne Temple too, he seemed to have uh, got this possessed there and Belpreen had a had a free, so I'm not quite sure what the referee's doing. I think he's going throwing it up there. Here we go, ref has it, throws it up here now, ball breaking inside, Garota Connor does well to take this ball, feeds it on, and Garota Connor now has a free on, and he's down injured again, you know, oh, these are the key players for them, it's uh, Garota Connor and Connor Bow, and both of them look to be in a bit of bother here in this first half. Yeah, the bodies seem tired, um, a few a few more players going down with um, uh, muscle soreness, and uh, I suppose we're only, we're not even halfway through the game, so... Um, they'll be looking to see if they can get them through the full game without any injuries. Um, if the goalie coming up, Warren Lloyd again to take his free. So, like the last few times they've taken on their players, they've got the free. So, I think they're just going to have to continue to do that and hopefully Warren can keep chipping them over and keep um, keeping the, the scoreboard ticking. So, keeper is up to feed once more and ready to kick this. Remarkably, he's got three so far and waiting here for his fourth. This goes over, it's the fourth from four. Here we go, he sends it in, it's curling and it just curls out to the right of the upright as we're looking at it here and drifts off and that one has gone wide. Ballyporine ready with a quick restart here and they're probably just over-reliant on the goalie for scores now. Look, I think so, look, he's scored the, the three points that Mind and Blue have, have on the scoreboard um, and he's the goalie so I think it's... Um, it's about time the forwards stepped up to the mark and, and start putting points over themselves. Ball has been kicked out long here. It's John Hassey has turned it over and away. Come mine, Temple Tuhi now holding that ball up, breaking the 45. And now they have a nice ball sent out here. It's uh, worked in there now. It is the centre back coming up the field here. Tom Mead, three of them after him. And Tom Mead, <laughs> listen to that, bro. The mine, Temple Tuhi crew love that. Yeah, they needed that score, and look, it was a good break up through the centre um, by Mead, and he got his, his score in the end. He took it very, very well, and um, he was lucky enough not to get in for a goal. Uh, Belpreen had defended it well, kept him out. Uh, they're wanting not to, to concede a goal before half time, I'm sure. 1 7 to 4 points. Long one out here, and it's uh, come off a of mine table two. We hand it is going to be sideline here. About to be struck fast here for. Ballyporeen ref just calling it back, taking a bit too quick for his liking here. Fionano Sullivan about to take this one here as uh, play is just going to be called back here. Reno Callahan in position now to take it. So he's just ready here, just on the mine. 65 here goes shot into the middle of the field here now. In as far as John O'Callaghan now. Over the far side this time, Noel Vaughan in possession now. Does a toe to hand there, a little high in front of Connor Bow, but uh, gets away with it here. On to Oisín Brennan now. Over the far side of the field they go. Christy English now. Oh, good ball sent straight in towards the corner forward now. And they have an attack building here. And this one is sent in all the way in and just drifts out and goes wide there. Uh, Kevin O'Mahony with the shot, I think it is, or rather it is Owen Morrissey with the final kick there for Bally Porine, but just drifts off and wide. Yeah, good uh, piece of play there. Uh, ball kicked in and running off the shoulder there and go well set up. Unfortunately not to get the score in the end, but um, well worked. 1-2 and unfortunate, as I said, to not get the score. In case you're just joining us, Aira Ogan and Carty have beaten Kill Sheelan in the other game, so it's all to play for here in this one. 1-7 one, to 4 points. They're all currently on 3 points in the group and uh, Kill Sheelan just with their first two wins in it, but uh, here we go. It is up to mine now. What can they do here? Mark Ryan in possession. Feeds this ball on to Tom Mead. Tom Mead back to John Hassey. Away he goes. Takes the challenge. Does very well there. The challenge from Fiannan O'Sullivan. Just came in and to put him off. But uh, good play there. And they have uh, free in here. And it is John Hassey in possession of the ball currently here. Going to have a look. Is the keeper on the way up. He's out towards the 45. And I think Oren Lyde wants another go at it. Yeah, great pass to play there by Hassett. Um, took on the ball um, and drawn to free again. That's what they keep having to do. And look, he held on to the stuff, the ball stuck with him. El Prim fouled him, and um, now it's another opportunity for Orange to try kick this ball over the bar. Excellent keeper here so far, and it's become such a massive part of the game, really. We've seen Evan Comerford do it for Tipperary and Kill Sheelan. We've seen Cluxton do it, um, Tyrone keeper, Donegal keeper, a lot of club goalies in Tipperary as well, well able to kick points 
or light three so far from freeze here he goes with this one sends it in and it's just curling again just tails out to the right of the upright that's uh three from five he has now yeah look it's a, it's a it's a hard one to kick especially with that wind is kind of blowing across the field as well so it's a tricky enough um position to take it from um he'll be disappointed with that i'm sure the last two have gone wide so and they, they could do with a they could do with a score on the scoreboard they haven't scored now in a while our the last score was from Mead, I suppose, but they could do with another one or two to try to stick with Ballyporeen. Mikey Sweeney and goals for Ballyporeen. Takes his time with this one. Sends it out long now and two mine players underneath it here and they've won it and away they go. It's Tom Mead. Takes a challenge there. Does well to hold on to that ball. Gives it into Danny Barrett. Barrett now coming through the middle and it's loose from him. And again, it's now... It's Bally Poreen, they've turned it over and away they go. Oshin Brennan, long ball, kicked all the way in towards the corner forward. Breaking ball in there now, it's Dara Brennan coming out to gather it. Does well, shakes off his marker, but he's won it free. The corner back goes to ground. Did well to pull him back and just make sure he didn't get in on goal, but the corner back has injured himself as well in the process and is down on the deck. So another mind temple to the injury in this first half. Yeah, I think he got caught up in the... the the tackle there um, and he might have got a slap but uh, pulled the jersey um, he, the Bellefreen could have been in for, for a goal or a point there so he, he, the, he pulled the jersey and um, it's a free in now for Bellefreen um, I suppose look up the other side of the field they lost possession I suppose it was, they could have given the ball sooner maybe and um, taken the better option but um, another point I'm sure here for Bellefreen and this one is just kicked over the bar just on half time here and that makes it uh one eight here to four points Ballyporeen just really going strong here Fernando O'Sullivan there with that and one eight to four points Connor Sweeney on fire for them in that first half with some excellent long range points and uh they have a nice advantage here with with you know playing against the wind now in the second half yeah look they're one eight as you said to four points up and they're going to be playing against the the wind in the se second half but um, I think it's just all about holding possession now for Bellyperine in the second half and just doing the, the simple things right um, and nothing out of out of the ordinary. Uh, they're working the ball well around, they're keeping, they're trying to open Mind Temple Tui up a small bit considering that they're very defensive. Um, I think they have nearly 14, or they have nearly the whole 14 men behind the ball, 13 majority of the time and um, I think they're they're trying to open them up and they're doing it very well. They're being patient on the ball and getting it into scoreable positions. So um, mine are going to have to look at getting a few more players, a few more forwards on the scoreboard. I think Orn Orn is the only one that's after scoring apart from um, Mead from play. So um, they they need to start looking at a few more options there. Good stuff, Samantha Lambert here. The rain is starting to bucket down here in Leahy Park in Cashel. We're just moving back here as far as we can at the back of the stand because it is heavy and the entire um, amount of people that are here are all heading for the stand now as this shower comes in again here. One eight to four points. We're going to take a very quick break and we're back with the second half of Ballyporeen and Mine Temple Tui after that. Have you heard about the incredible prizes in the new Tipperary GA Club's draw? I'm asking you to support the new draw that's just launched, uh, which is a novel stair super prize, believe it or not, of a horse and car, um, plus holidays and cash prizes as well. So over the year, there's 11 cars up for grabs, uh, with a total prize fund of 500,000. Um, remember, you have to be in it to win it, so just to join, go to www.tipperary.ga.ie. Remember, it's your club, it's your county, and it's your draw. So sign up and support today. The Tipperary GA Club's draw. You have to be in it to win it.
Oh, well, you're very welcome back to a rain sodden Leahy Park here in Cashel. You can see the rock of Cashel in the distance if you're watching this game on the stream. And uh, Samantha Lambert is here with me, and so too is Jonathan Cullen and uh, Michael Dundon of the Tipperary Star, who we'll have a word with in a minute here. But uh, Jonathan, going into this, Kill Sheel and Kill Cash were top on four points. Mind Temple Tui on two points. Ballyporeen on one, and Eirog and Akarthi on one. You informed us that Eirog and Akarthi won their game, so they're on three points now. So it it could very likely come down now to mathematical difference. Well, it probably will, Stephen, yeah, because um, uh, as you said, um, Eirog and Akarthi now are on three points and they're minus, um, they're, they're minus um, three. They've won, they're, sorry, they won by five, so they're minus three. Yeah, that's correct. They're minus three on, on the difference. Um, Ballyporeen um, Bally at the moment, as it stands, we'll say before the game started, they're on minus six. So if Ballyporeen win, for instance, by four points, uh, they'll go ahead of Aerog and Akarty, and they will qualify in second place. If, it, if this match ends in a draw, um, both Mind Temple Tuhi and um, oh, Mind Temple Tuhi will have three points. Uh, so they'll they'll still qualify. Or and so uh, Mind Temple Tuhi will have three points, and Aerog and Akarty will have three points. So it'll come down to the, to the head to head between the two of them. And Mind Temple Tuhi won that game, so they'll qualify in second place. So it's a uh, it's a kind of a, it's, it's, it's all to play for here, Stephen, you know. Yeah, I hope you have that, that calculator and a backup at the ready as well. Michael Dundon of the Tipperary Star, what did you make of that first half? Ah, sure, I suppose the conditions were the big factor. There's a strong wind down the field and, and uh, mine were trying to play a possession game to slow down. And, but when they went up, uh, Ballyporeen masked their back line so that it wasn't giving them any scope. There was a big gap from... from shooting range to get into shooting range that they weren't able to do so it's still very much i mean you have to fancy ballyporeen at the moment uh, it's a decent enough lead but there's a strong breeze and i wouldn't rule out mine catching them the second half right, depending maybe if connor bow and and garota connor who pick, picked up injuries uh, if they if they're in trouble mine will be in trouble the two of them are so influential aren't they and hamill uh, well they would, they'd be key players for them you know but but uh, um I haven't seen Garota Connor still limping as he's walking out now for the second half. I see him there, so um, his mobility, Connor Bo seems to be all right from what I can see. But uh, Conor, Garota Connor's mobility is a big factor, particularly for a fellow playing midfield. You want to be able to travel. Good stuff, Michael Dundon at the Tiberi Star. Jonathan, uh, you're happy up overall with the championships, six through, and uh, you know today's group will be decided here now as well. Yeah, I think Stephen, the, the 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 losers versus losers and winners versus winners in the second round has really made the championship. To be honest, because it gives really meaningful games in the last in the round three of the of the games, as is, as was seen in the hurling uh, last weekend and as again this weekend. So I think it's uh, as they're turning into a really really good championship. And as I said, I think this could be an interesting second half. I, I don't think Ballyporeen have this game won by a long shot yet. Good stuff, Jonathan Cullen, PRO of Tipperary County Board. We'll be back to Jonathan at the water break stage of the game and uh, Samantha Lambert here alongside me on commentary here the ref waiting for a ball to throw it in here to start the second half do you think we'll see the same type tactics from mine or will they vary it now with the wind um, look I think they're going to have to get more scores up in the, the scoreboard if they're obviously going to want to win um, so they're going to have to go at the Belperine defence a lot more than they were in the first half um, they have the win behind them now, so they have a bit of an advantage with them in the second half, so they'll have to use that as well. Um, I think Bally Perrine will be looking at to hold possession and, and just, as I said earlier, do the simple things right and just keep it basic to the basics. So it'll be an interesting second half. And here we go, Tommy Sweeney and Connor Bow go up for this one and the ball just knocked down. Tassie Hamill down as far as... Uh the centre back there, Mead, and Mead tries to fill it that ball. And I can just see D Fogarty is on the field to play for mine, Temper Tui. So changes there for mine. We'll bring that to you as we progress it with it. But it is Reno Callahan now who feeds this ball outside him onto Tommy Sweeney. Tommy sends it in around the house now in there. Dangerous ball, low one inside. Looking in there for Dara Brennan, but it spills away. And away comes Connor Bow. Connor Bow on up the field here now on to D Lahey and away he goes now and plays this ball on a little bit loose but Jack Taylor does well but it is uh, 
Ballyporeen who had the ball back and they have a free here and a player just down injured in that challenge as uh, Reno Callahan comes over to take the free. Yeah, um, the conditions are after getting very messy, I suppose, with the shower there at halftime. Um, it's going to be a lot of slipping and sliding around the place and, and the ball not going to hand. So um, they're really going to have to try and maybe work the, the hand passing and keep a short range. You've seen the ball going into the belly for full forward there um, and slipped out of um, his possession. So um, they're really going to have to try to get the ball to hand and keep the hand passing short. From your experience, Sam, do you have to work harder when conditions are like this or is it a bit you know, send it long, what do you think? Yeah, look, I think um, it, it kind of anything can happen, so your reaction has to be good and um, you have to be really on the ball and um, kind of expecting the unexpected nearly. And this one taken quick, Owen Morrissey now as Ballyporeen fill it that ball out the far side, Noel Vaughan on again here now to uh, Morrissey again, Owen Morrissey now leaves it off to Reno Callahan on their half back line here. Trying to charge on the stand has uh, doubled with numbers here as the people across the way just had to come out of that shower. It's still wet here, but not as much as it was maybe 10 minutes ago here. But it is Ballyporeen playing against the wind in the second half on the attack. Oshin Brennan here. This ball just been turned over up there by Pierce Mead, the captain. But it is again Ballyporeen who win it back over the far side of the field. Connor Bow now trying to gather clean possession and it's just slipped away from him in the tricky conditions. It is going to be a line ball for Ballyporeen. Yeah, they're finding it hard to get their feet even. Um, you can see that the conditions are, are making it difficult for the boys to keep possession and um, they're, they're slipping all over the place. So we have to look at their, their boots. Seamus O'Callaghan takes this one away come Ballyporeen over the far side now trying to work it back in towards the middle here and the chance is on here and this one is kicked high all the way in and it's sent in and over the bar an absolutely brilliant point there for Ballyporeen and that moves them on now to 1-9 up against 4 points that point courtesy of Christy English Great score I suppose from the far side there and with the win against him as well so um, very well taken um, and they'll be looking to keep the scoreboard taken there for the next while and keep possession. Short one now out to Mark Ryan. Moves that ball on again quickly here now to Pierce Mead. Back here to uh, the far side to Ono Garman here and mine just trying to work that ball up with pace here but it's been intercepted and away come Ballyporeen this time. Long ball sent in by Christy English in there. Dangerous one inside. The chance is on here and it's, oh, it's just blazed across the goals and wide. Thomas Vaughan with the chance. Went with the left boot. He really needed to use the right and curl it around the keeper. Oh, geez, that was a, that was a chance really to kind of um, settle well Perrine into the second half and put the lead up. Um, could have went down and maybe and made sure he was straight in. It was 1-1 one, one goalie, but um, went wide. Long one down the field, away they go. It's won by D Fogarty. Out he comes now. Feeds this ball outside to John Hassey. Challenge is met out there. He kicks it in. Oh, and it's just dropping short into the goalie's hands. And keeper works it back out now again. Back out to Daryl Lines out the far side. But the ball is loose and it's gone out over the line. And a chance for Connor Bow from a line ball just outside the 21. And I wonder, will he go for it here? Like, will he just swing that one in around the house with a right boot? Yeah, maybe he has the win behind him, but I'd say he'll work it in and try to get a score into a more scorable position. Go short with it into Lahi, back outside again, and this one comes in, and it's gone over the bar this time, and well worked score for mine. Absolutely, a great option there, I suppose, you were after mentioning, but he take it from the sideline, he nearly practically did there. Um, after that passage of play, he took it from quite out near the sideline, great score, and um, that'll give mine a bit of a boost now, and try to keep possession and keep the keep the possession up here. 1-9, playing five points now. So it is seven on it at the moment according to the scoreboard here in Cashel, but we're just seeing a change here now and Garrod O'Connor has uh, just gone off the field of play. Garrod is uh, coming off, looks like that back injury or lower back injury that he had earlier has caught him. Yeah, we'd spotted him going out there in the second half. He seemed to be um, immobile and he was holding his back going out, so I didn't expect him to last too long when he wasn't able to barely walk, walking out to the throw, so that's unfortunate for mine. This ball hit out the far side and it's uh, 
just loose out there. It's one for Ballyporeen and away they go now this ball hit in all the way inside here it's Ballyporeen coming on the attack here trying to create something back to Sweeney and Connor Sweeney this time sends it in and Connor Sweeney with another score in this game you give him time and room he will punish you 110 playing five yeah a great score again um, they seem to have worked the ball up very very fast um, and there was a lot more options there um, for Ballyporeen because they're breaking through and breaking the lines faster than what mine are at the minute. Long ball sent out towards centre field there and it's won by Kieran Lyde out there and ball just spills free but it's out to the hands of Christy English. Christy English now trying to work this one inside in towards Thomas Vaughan in there but mine just with players back and Hamill does well to win that ball back somehow. Out to Pierce Mead now. The captain moves that ball on quick, but it's loose and has a second chance here if he can control this one. And it is going to be a free down the field there. Joe Grady just nearby there for mine. But uh, Hamill gathers it now and it's taken. But they have a player injured, so play is going to be called back here. Looks to me like it is own Garmin that's uh, down on the deck, injured at the minute. Yeah, a lot of 50-50 balls going in, I suppose. Um, they're going for each ball and there's hard slaps being put in. So, a uh, very physical game and we can see that there's a lot of injuries after being picked up um, and tired bodies at the minute. So, um, they'll be looking to maybe make a change. I think there he seems to be in a bit of bother. So, John Coughlin on the field here for Mine Temple 2. He, they've lost Garrod O'Connor and uh, if they have another loss here, you know, they're falling like flies now. Yeah, Garrod is a huge loss already to them um, after being replaced there. He seems to be back up again, Owen Gorman seems to be back up, so they'll be relieved to see that. Here we go, this one kicked out now. Far side there to Joe Grady now. Back inside, Tassie Hamill. On again here now to Owen Gorman, who's up and moving about freely. Back again to Hamill. On again now to Pierce Mead. Does well, three Ballyporeen players in on him. And the ref has penalised him there for that and the backroom team not happy about that from Ballyporeen, but it's taken quick out of the far side they go this time. Out to Coughlin. On again now to Mark Ryan. Back to Connor Bow on the 65. Good work rate all through by Ballyporeen. Not allowing any player time on the ball without a challenge. But it is Connor Bow now. They need something from him. Really inspirational here. This ball played into Garman and he's lost his footing and slipped. And the ball spills free, but they have a free in in there. And they'll be delighted just to get that free in and the pressure relieved because Ballyporeen really are just hounding them with every single challenge. Yeah, they are. Their work rate is very good and they've been tackling them the whole time and they're tackling them in, in packs. So. Um, mind you, two are finding it hard, but a great score. The long one uh, kicked John. in and over the bar. John Hassey with that score. Lovely point by the half forward for Mind Temple 2. Six points they're on now. 110 for Ballyporeen. Here we go. Keeper gets ready again. Tommy Sweeney in goals now. Mikey Radder in goals. And uh, Mikey ready with this. Slots it out to the corner back. Just out there. Well took by Noel Vaughan. Plays that ball on again. Owen Morrissey now. A bit of space opens up in front of him here. Morrissey. Half challenged by Mead, but goes by him here. They've worked it on to Seamus O'Callaghan. Inside now to Tommy Sweeney. Sweeney, time and room. Angles it, and it's just a little wild. And the ball goes over the far side. A lovely catch over there by D. Lahey. And away he goes now as uh, Mine try and create something here. Point score a minute ago. John Hassey just moves that ball on again. Four or five players on here. The rain starts to pelt down again. John Coughlin on the ball now. Away he goes. Great experienced player for Mine Temple 2. And they need that now. He had to go off injured in an earlier match. But great to have him to play today. As this shot comes all the way in. And just drifts out. Keeper takes a deflection off the keeper. And it just breaks outside. It's won by Callahan out there. And it is going to be a free out. Ref is calling play out here just back out to the 45 and I think he's given a free out now to Ballyporeen. Yeah great pass to play there the, the teams are working hard and um, it, the shower there is going to make things even a small bit messier Um Ballyporeen are going to have to work it up and try to get another score under the belt now. Owen Morris he plays it. a quick one with Mikey Sweeney back again now to Oshin Brennan. 
Back out they come in the attack here. Ballyporeen working it out slowly. Noel Vaughan this time. 110 playing six pints. And now they have another free out there. And uh, they're just doing enough to let that clock tick away, Sam. Yeah, like they're, they're in no rush to do any scoring. They kind of they're scoring done 110 up on the board and um they're happy to, enough to keep possession and um, slow the game down as much as they can and um, keep mine from scoring really. So what can mine Tipple do he do in this game? Leem England's team waiting to get through in this one here. They've uh, it's been taken out there and Dee Fogarty just gives away that free. It's uh, going to be struck by Reno Callahan out here now to Seamus O'Callaghan up they go with this up to Christy English good clever ball from English playing well for Ballyporeen hits it in there in around the house back comes Pierce Mead does well for Mine Temple Tui to retrieve the situation they've worked it out to Louis back outside now to uh, John Hassey out the far side onto Tossie and away they go up the feed John Cockton clever ball looking up there for Bo Bo has it now trying to work it inside there in past the 45 it's still Bo, he takes on the full back, but out near the sideline, has to go back to D Fogarty. D plays it back again to Bo. Bo now, back in the middle into John Cockland. Cockland takes the challenge, oh good play, feeds it out to Pierce Mead now. This is great play from Mind Temple Tui out to Louis here. He's going to have a go, and Louis just sends it a bit wrong there, but it's uh, still hopping in there and goes out, and they have a 45 out of it, and that was super play by Mind Temple Tui to work the ball all the way inside. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they worked it very well up, um, and they worked it quite fast, um, coming up through the lines, breaking the lines, and uh, set themselves up for a good scoring opportunity. Um, the ball has gone out for a 45 now, so here's another opportunity for Lloyd to try to kick it over the bar, and put mine another point up this keeper is serious here but uh missed the last couple in the first half but here he goes it's Lloyd he sends it in and it's punched in oh it's just gone out and gone wide oh so close and that could so easily have been in the net Hamill there with a little flick but just the angles slightly wrong and it's the wrong side of the post yeah look that could have changed the game to be fair um, unfortunately, just get the not even get a score off it now, not get the point or whatever about the goal. But um, uh, a goal would really change things up and um, make the last the last twenty minutes or so very exciting. This ball kicked out and it's gone out over the line from the kick out. So mine will use this as another attack base. Grady now feeds that ball on again there, and it is a free. John Hassey did really well there to hold that ball up. Really influential for Mind Temple to E here as uh, he just leaves this one to Connor Bow. And we've seen Connor Sweeney, the other county footballer of note here, who slotted over a couple of them from there, but uh, Bow doesn't risk it. Goes back in the middle now, back inside to John Cockton, back in now to Bow again. Bow. Coming through the middle, he's going to have a go here and sends it in. It's high, long, but it just tails out and it goes to the left of the post and it has gone wide. Still, Ballyporeen 1 6, Mind Temple 2 6 points. Yeah, Ballyporeen have just made a change there. Adrian English, I think, has come on there for Christy English. Um, so I think they're trying to freshen things up maybe and um, keep the intensity and the energy levels going so that he's gone into the forward line. So, keeper gets ready again here ball just runs off he had it teed up nicely there but uh, the wind just took it away from the tee he has to place it again since this out to feed John Cockland oh does brilliantly there in Louis helping him out in there and the ball just skids free in comes Tommy Sweeney and Tommy Sweeney just spills it but it's back out to O'Callaghan in centre field and Reno Callahan there this time in centre field just won that ball goes to ground and he's down on the deck and uh, just nursing a bit of an injury there so a lot of mine players in the first half picking up injuries a lot of Ballyporeen players in the second down picking up injuries yeah the, um, the tired body Stephen to be fair um, very physical game they're taking a lot of slaps so um, I'm sure Ballyporeen won't be in any rush to get back up onto their feet uh, they're going to try to slow the game down as much as possible and um, try to get them to keep the, keep the possession for the next while um, until the next water break and reassess things in. And tactics play such a huge part in a game, you know, a few seconds can be vital. Oh, absolutely. I've been there um, and it's the senior teams, the more mature, experienced teams and all about it as well. Like, And uh, we learned the hard way as well, the tip ladies, um, when we went up to the senior ranks of how much tactics is important. Ball sent up along the line here and it's gone out. 
It's going to be a mind temple to he line ball. Kicked in the middle now by Mead, all the way inside here. Away they go, coming on the attack here. Oh, it's just a loose ball in there, uh, just at the wrong time. Pierce Mead just lost out. Connor Sweeney now. Away he goes, up to the 65. Still Connor Sweeney now. Feeds on that ball. Barry Poreen working it up along the line inside now, and it's a hard challenge up there with the ball spills away. Hamill has it now. And they go up the feed now, working it up along. Three, four passes there. Nice ball out by Mead out the far side now. They're running in waves here. It is Mind Temple 2. And the attack. Mark Ryan down the field here now with this. Feeds it back in the middle. Tom Mead now this time. And he has a free in. Uh, need scores big time in this game if they're to stay alive in the championship. 110 for Ballyporeen. Six points for mine. Temple 2, your coverage with thanks to Temple 2, he farm machinery on Tip FM. If you're tuned to the Tipperary GAA stream, we're beamed worldwide. It's the FBD Insurance County Championships Round 3. Aero and Carty have beaten Kilsheelan in the earlier game, but this one is sent in here, and it's over the bar. Mine are staying alive. They're staying in the championship. Jan Hassey with the score. Yeah, he's been very influential for the whole game. He's been taking on the players and he's been breaking the tackles um, throughout the whole game. And he really is after uh, putting over two great points there in the last uh, few minutes to keep uh, Mind Temple 2 in touch with Betty Perrine. Here we go. Keeper gets ready with this. It is uh, Mikey Sweeney who sends it out over the line and the ball comes all the way right up to us here, Sam. I thought you were going to drive that one back out there. I know. Taken here. It is the centre back. And Tom Mead just takes it loosely. Connor Sweeney nicks in and takes it though. It's up the field. They've worked it up along here now. Up towards Adrian English. And English takes this free quick, just slats it into space and all. Oh, John Coughlin just in with a challenge there on Reno Callahan, and I think he just tried to punch the ball out of his hands, but uh, just caught him, and it looks like O'Callaghan is just a bit winded there now. Yeah, he seems to be down in a bit of bother. That was a great interception there by Connor Sweeney. Um, we can see him kicking over his scores. It was great to see him um, defending as well, and defending his tackling there is, is superb. So uh, it was great to see uh, the interception there by Connor, and they were in for a score, and I'm sure um, they might get another. Um, point out of this one. So, Ballyporeen just holding the play up here now. O'Callaghan is on his feet and just takes a deep breath here. Gets ready with this and it will be the Tipperary captain and the Ballyporeen star, Connor Sweeney, who will take this. Way he goes now. 110 playing seven points before he kicks this. It is Sweeney looking at the post here. Connor Sweeney for Ballypurin takes three steps and sends it into the wind and all the way over the bar. Just as the water break stage, we're at the three quarter mark in this game and the ref blows for the water break. And Connor Sweeney, inspiration, give me that ball. He puts it over the bar. Yeah, definitely. Look, and he nearly made the score himself, you know, as I said, with the interception he made there. And then he follows it up with a, with a brilliant um, free. So uh, they're seven points ahead, I think, really. Belle Perrine seem to be in the, the driving seat here and um, it'll be hard to see Mind Temple 2 kind of bring it back any bit closer. So we go to Jonathan Cullen just for an update. As it stands, Jonathan, who is true in this? Belle Perrine 1 11, Mind 7 points. Yeah, so as it stands, it will be Belle Perrine who will be second in the group and Kilsheel and Kilcash will top the group. So uh, on scoring difference, uh, it's, it's, going to, it's coming out of scoring difference that um, Bally Porine will have the, the better scoring difference at the moment. So um, as, as I said, it's, it, as it stands, it's going to be Kilsheel and Kilcash who will top the group and uh, Bally Porine who will go in second place and the other two teams then will co obviously continue on, on to play in the Tom Cusack Cup. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it is, they're going to need that lead as well to keep the points ticking over because uh, mine will come back at them strong. I do well, but I think the loss of um, Garod, Garod O'Connor, is going to be immense for uh, Mind Temple too. It's you've seen it there already there that um, you know they're, they're suffering at the loss of, and you can't like I mean in this at this stage of a competition, it's very hard to to, to to lose one of your better players, and it's shown there at the moment. So Mind Temple too, it's a big it's a big quarter for them now. It's a big a big big ask, but you know we'll see how it goes. Jonathan Cullen there, PRO of the Tipperary County Board with that update. And Ballyporeen look full value for it going into the final quarter. They know what they have to do. You know, they've they've won games against mine in the past and they're going all out. 
Yeah, look, it's up to themselves now, I suppose, and they know what they have to do, as you said. Um, keep the ball, keep it simple, and uh, they're in the driving seat. They just need to keep the heads and uh, keep the focus, concentration for this last quarter. Short one out from the keeper to restart out to Mark Ryan, and they go over the far side of the field, and it's fed on there by Louis Ante De La Haye, and away they go again into Tassie in the middle now, and he plays on this ball onto Conor Bow, and it is going to be... Just a free in the middle of the field, rather, Tom Mead, that uh, just won that one out there. So, uh, a chance here for John Hassey again. He's been very direct with the frees, very good on them so far. They need him now to point this keeper, staying where he is for this one. But uh, Hassey sizes it up and sends it in. It's going to break in there and it's just kept in place somehow, but now it trails out and just has gone wide and they just need that breaking ball to bounce favourably now. Yeah, definitely. I suppose, look, I don't I don't think um, Mind Simple 2 have really scored too much from play either and um, a, lot of their free, a lot of their scores have come from frees or 45, so... Um, if you're going to win, if you're going to win a match, you really need to be seeing the forwards putting up some score from playtime rather than than just freeze. Um, so it's hard to know what they're going to do because you know they're without O'Connor in the middle. Yeah, look, he's, you can see there he's, he he was influential in the first um, half, and they seem to miss him a good bit. Like they're they're struggling at midfield, um, and the kickouts they seem to have to go short the whole time now, or they were taking the longer option in the first half when he, they had him to kick it to. So he is a massive loss. Connor Bow feeds it back to Hamill and back again to Bow, and away we go. Oh, what a score! Mind Temple to me. They're not going away without a fight. A brilliant score there by Bo. Um, I, say he, I think that that's his second one there. Um, straight up into the air. Um, a great kick and um, they needed that. So it is 1-11 for Ballyporeen. Eight points for mine. Temple Tuhi. Is there another kick of life in mine? They've won the kick out and away they go. It's Reed Beards this ball inside here. And they, oh, it's just sent wide. Dilahi just got it and uh, was in two minds where to go with it. Yeah, right. look, I suppose decision making there might have um, mightn't have helped. He 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 didn't know whether he was going to go for the goal or go for the point. Um, but a well worked, uh, well won kick out, and um, they're keeping the pressure on Belly Perrine. So uh, it'll be an exciting finish to to this match. They seem to have got on top of the kick outs, the Belly Perrine kick outs, and they're winning a good share of them. Yeah, I know, and that's important as well. I think the possessions in in from the kick outs are gone so important in in football and in in hurling as well in particular so um, here we go they've turned it over and they've won this kick out as well they're on the attack here now working it in it is the lahi now sends it down into the corner my temple two coming on the attack here now worked in there by own ryan feeds it back in towards center field there and the ball just loose again in there and the ref is giving a free end to my temple two and that really could have gone either way like so it's just up near the 40 Five and uh, John Hassey has a chance here. Keeper is staying where he is here, and like this one, here we go. We're just going to see how he gets on with this. John Hassey steadying himself here, sends it in with the right boot all the way in. And listen to the roll here. Nine well in this game, all of a sudden, five points now. Yeah, I look, they're keeping the pressure on Belly Perrine and um, I think it's it's time now Belly Perrine starts to hold possession and, and win the kick out. They've done just that now, so um, they'll have to hold on to it and, and keep the heads. Kick out one this time by Belly Perrine here. Tommy Sweeney over to Connor. Back into the middle now this time. Into Reno Callahan. Walked it up here now. Good long kick up the field here now. They're Trying to build an attack here. They're all gone up to the mine. 65 here. Owen Morrissey leaves that ball off. And now it's been turned over. It's uh, Norvana just goes. And away come mine here. Tom Mead down the field here now. Tom Mead past the 45. Wrestle to the deck. And it is going to be a free in for mine, Temple Tui. And Bally Perrine just not happy with the way he was allowed in easily there. It is going to be a card here for uh, the midfielder. John O'Callaghan, I think, will pick up a yellow card for that challenge. It looked like he was bearing in on goal. Yeah, I did. He, he, um, he took the option of, of just taking him down, I suppose, and taking the, the hit with the yellow card. Um, rather than him getting through for goal. But it's another opportunity now for Sean Hassey to throw it over the bar. 
Here he goes, away goes, right Bouge, high, long, and it's trapping inside in the keeper in there, and it's just gone over the bar. The goalie, hopping in front of the goalie, you could just see the net rattling very easily there, but it's tipped over the bar. Just about, just about tipped over the bar. Um, that would have been um, <laughs> definitely an exciting end to the, to the game, um, and I think that's what Mind Humble 2 needed, was um, a goal to set them set them on their way, but they, they really are after picking up, um, picking things up, and they're they're in good flow now if they can just keep it up and keep it going. Going into this, it was Kilshielen on four points, mine on two, Ballyporeen on one point, Eroga and Carthy on one point. And today, the two teams that uh, were on one point going into this uh, are in the driving seat here. Eroga, of course, beat Kilshielen, but Ballyporeen well in with a shout here in this game. It is 11 playing 10 points. So just four in it. Can mind Tibble Tui turn it over? Dee Fogarty, away he goes. He's a good basketball player as well. Plays midweek in uh, Turles inside in the presentation. Very good basketballer. Dee Fogarty feeds this ball across field here. But it's won by Ballyporeen and they've turned it over and away they come down the field now on the attack. Trying to work that ball up along. Reno Callahan now takes the challenge. Holds it off here. Back out as far as Tommy Sweeney. He sends it in around the house. Dangerous ball in there. In towards Thomas Vaughan. And a shot comes in from Vaughan. And Ballyporeen respond with an excellent score. one twelve. Ballyporeen. 10. Mind Temple Dewey in the final quarter. Yeah, good score there. And a score that they needed. And scored in a while. And um, Mind Temple Dewey seemed to have all the possession. So that was an important score for them. Um, to see them into the, the last few minutes of this game. Here we go. Quick one taken over the far side there. It is mine in defence. Trying to build out to D. Lahey now. Away they go. Up the feed now. Trying to hold it up there. Meets a challenge though. Two Ballyporeen players in on top of him here. And Ballyporeen have turned it over. A good challenge as uh, Adrian English takes away the ball. And away they work it up the field here now. Challenge comes in again. But he feeds it back outside here. It is Ballyporeen coming on the attack. The wind has died down here in the second half. Nothing like what it was at the start of the game here. Sun is actually starting to break through again here in Cashel. We can see the rock again. It is Ballyporeen working it back out the field here now. Seamus O'Callaghan goes over here as far as Oshin Brennan. Away he goes. D Fogarty in with the challenge and they've turned it over. Mind Temple 2. He break with pace here now. All the way up the field. Tom Mead. Feeds it on to Louis and back again. It's Tom again and it's spilt though. And it is Tommy Sweeney who gathers it back for Ballyporeen. All the challenges come in at once and away they go. Oshin Brennan now. Ball on the deck at the moment and he's blowing up for holding the ball there. John O'Callaghan was just on the deck and he was just standing over the ball waiting for a teammate perhaps. But uh, mine have another free. Yeah, it's turned into a dogfight here now and... Um anything could happen I suppose um, they're really trying to hold on to possession both teams and possession is vital you can see that there's a few the Bellaparine one are going, players are going down with a few injuries I suppose maybe and slowing down the clock a small bit but they wouldn't here we go score. long high and over the bar John Hassey again Four points in it now. Mind Temple Tui. Will they need a goal or will they just continue? Just do what they're doing. Yeah, I think they, if, if they keep tipping them over, I think they're going. They're doing very well. They're holding on to possession and they're they're breaking through um, the Bally Perrine defence in comparison to what they were doing in the first half. They're moving the ball very, very fast, breaking through the lines and um, the opportunities are coming for them. So I think if they keep doing what they're doing and keep uh, the scoreboard ticking, that they could be very close to Bally in the next few minutes. A four point game here in Leahy Park and here in Cashel today. Our coverage on Tip FM with thanks to Temple Tuhi Farm Machinery. And it is the FPD Insurance County Championship and the ball has been picked off the ground out there. Ballyporeen just getting a little bit rattled here in the latter stages of the game and mind Temple Tuhi coming at them in waves. John Hassey on the 45 now. Very good on freeze here in the second half. Here he goes. Sends it in with the right boot this time. It's high. It's going to drop short here. It's a little flick in there and it just goes off the post and back out. It's back out here. D Fogarty trying to control it in there and the ref just saying that it has gone wide. Umpire is signalling that the ball had just crossed the line. So it is going to be a kick out again for Ballyporeen. Have they seen that wave of green and gold off or can Mount Temple Tui come back in this game? Still 
four points, Samantha Lambert. Yeah, I think they could uh, breathe a sigh of relief there with Belly Perrine and uh, it was dropping short there and there was a few mindful two players in around the goals. Uh, easily could have went into the back of the net but they've cleared again and just back to Belly Perrine kick out. This is an important kick out to win now to hold possession. Uh, for Belly Perrine, so they'll be looking at it, looking at their, some of their key players to, to get on possession here now. Do you think mine have to change it, Sam, or is it too little, too late? I think it's too little, too late, nearly, but um, they still seem to be very dogged, full of energy, and, and uh, playing with a lot of heart, so anything could happen yet. They really are playing a lot better, I think, in the last, the last, um, the second half of this game, so it'll be interesting to see. Ball in the middle here, and it is going to be a free for Ballyporeen just in around centre field here. They have a free in, and they're just slowing this game down nice and steady. Connor Sweeney coming out to take this one here, and Sweeney thinking about going back to his wing back with it rather than going forward, and he does that. So over the far side of the field, back in again now, on to John O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan plays that ball on again onto Morrissey. Holding that ball up there in centre field. Connor Sweeney. Sweeney. Steady there. Just making sure that they're, they're just keeping the ball and not conceding scores. The clock is ticking all the time. It's in Ballyporeen's favour. 112 to 11 points. They're clear here, but it's into Callahan. Reno Callahan coming through the middle. He sends this in and it just hops in there just above the goals and it goes out and to the right of the upright and it has gone wide. So it is still a four point game here and mine badly in need of scores here. Mead coming over for a quick one here. It's Pierce Mead, but uh, Keeper just sees the corner forward lurking there, but uh, sees now there's time and room into Pierce Mead's hands. Away he goes. They go over the far side of the field now. Over as far as Mark Ryan. Mark just holding the ball up there now. Mine in need of scores now. Clock against them. They need to work that ball up the field. Takes a challenge over there, but does well to just move that ball on. And they still have it, but being bottled up the far side now. Can they find a bit of room here? It is mine who come on the attack here. And it is going to be a free out to Ballyporeen. And really mine just slow to work that ball up the field. Yeah, um, Ballyporeen would be, be delighted to get that free and get the possession back again. Um, they'll be trying to get their key players on the ball now, like... Um, Connor Sweeney uh, to settle them. There seem to be silly mistakes being made um, on both sides. Pressure seems to be getting to them, but um, last minute or so or whatever's left in the game it will uh, tell a lot and just they need to keep their heads now and just keep the energy levels going. A lot of tired bodies out there. So Sweeney holding that ball up. Mine, a bit of fighting them all right, but they're slow just working the ball up to the full forward line. They need the scores quick in this one. It's uh, taken now by Sweeney and they've worked it all the way back to their goalkeeper 112 to 11 points that's a four point lead Ballyporeen looking like the knockout stages of the championship for them here today as uh, they work that ball back up now to O'Callaghan inside here now Reno O'Callaghan on the attack here Dee Fogarty chasing him down here but uh, he moves that ball on quick here now inside here to John O'Callaghan and John has a free in this time the challenge came in it was just loose kind of challenge in around the waist and it is going to be another very kickable one for Connor Sweeney whether he opts to keep possession or take the score now but uh, mine really need a goal now Oh, they definitely, I suppose, look, we're coming to the last stages of the game and um, that was a lazy tackle a silly free to give away um, and Connor will be looking to put this over I'd imagine and give them another point point up advantage so steady as he goes here now Connor Sweeney Tipperary Munster winning captain back in 2020 kicks it in high and it's dropping over the bar ah super kick again like it's Sweeney yeah great score um from a difficult position to be fair with the wind against them too so um, we've seen it done in the first half by the Mind Temple Tui goalie um, and Conor Sweeney has kicked him over out of his hands um, each time this half too. Keeper gets ready with this. Lloyd needs to get this ball down the field now. Leaves it off here to D. Lahey. Goes out the far side now. Owen Gorman now. Away he goes. Still in their half back line here. Hamill has it. Feeds it on over the far side. Away goes Mead this time. Tom Mead now 
Runs into a red wall. Still me going through. Takes on four of them and he's working it in and sends it in. And this one has uh, gone over the bar. The ref has given the score. He was blown for a free in, but he gets the point. It's just a one score game. Yeah, they're looking for a goal, I suppose. And uh, Bellaprine will be hoping that they don't concede that. It's very close. Um, and they could easily drop it in with the conditions at the air. It's very slippery out there. So um, a goal like that is, is easy to happen on a day like today. So it's very important that they win this this kick out once again. Oh, it's a two-score game, actually. 1-13 playing 12 here. I thought they were working it down more, but 1-13 to 12. It is Ballyporeen on the attack here. Bursting inside, and they have another free in this time. Again, Fernando Sullivan just involved in everything up there and really steady for him. Yeah, he was being held there, so they're calling back a free. He's gone down again, trying to slow down, slow the game down. Um, I'd imagine that Conor Sweeney will make his way up to, to kick this over the bar. So, play being held up here, and it is going to be Sweeney again. Conor Sweeney. Jonathan, we'll call you in for an update. What's happening here on the table and the mathematics? Yeah, well, as it stands at the moment now, Ballyporeen um, will go through on scoring difference. They need to win by four points. They're winning, obviously, by four points. So they'll go. They'll be minus two, and uh, Aero, Aero Van Akert will be minus three, uh, both with three points each. So uh, Ballyporeen will go through on the scoring difference as it stands. Brilliant stuff. Jonathan Cullen, PRO of Tipperary County Board, with the information there for us on hand. It is Connor Sweeney here. And he gets ready and sends it in, and it's very like the last kick, and just curls outside this time. But Lloyd goes up and knocks it down. Mine have possession now. It's been turned over. Mac Ryan loses out here as uh, Ballyporeen come on the attack, and they have a free in. And the ref just call and play back. They were in possession. They want to play it to go on there. I'm sure. Yeah, look, they were nearly in for a goal until the, the referee called it back there. So, uh, look, another opportunity for um, Connor to kick it over the bar. And I suppose it's slowing down the game another bit and the, the clock is ticking. So, Belbreen won't mind um, another free being, being um, taken. So, it is Sweeney here getting ready now. Standing over this one for Ballyporeen. Mine need the scores, but it is Ballyporeen on the attack here. And Sweeney... Makes absolutely no mistake with that, and he's just providing such leadership. It was a bit like Owen Kelly with Mullinahone there recently. Yeah, definitely. Look, they're all look, you, you look to your your key and your pivotal players at times like this, especially when uh, they need a win under the belt and keep the score at four points so they can qualify. So there you go. Well, it's all over here. The final whistle has just sounded. Ballyporeen, 114. Mine, Temple Tuohy, 12 points. So a five point win. And Sam, they're full value for it, I presume. Yeah, no, definitely a great game. Um, they'll be delighted to get that win um, and win with, as you said, the four points with the, the points difference. Uh, the calculations going on here behind us. Um, so they'll be delighted to get that uh, win under their belt and, and qualify. And like mine made a, a game of it really, but they never looked like getting that goal and they badly needed it. No, I think, look, um, I think they actually played quite well in the last quarter. I know Garrod O'Connor went off and he was a huge loss to them, but I think their tactics in the second half, they were running at the, the Ballyporeen defence with a lot more energy and um, heart. And I think um, they really broke the lines a lot better and, and got... On, on scores like that you've seen Tony Hassey there was uh, making uh, great moves forward in, at, the, at the heart of the defence of Bellyperine and creating opportunities in comparison to what was going on in the first half where they couldn't break the tackles and they couldn't get through so um, it was great to see it Great stuff, Samantha Lambert. We're bringing in the PRO here of Tip County Board Jonathan Cullen. Jonathan Cullen finally eight are now known in Tipperary football that's correct, Stephen. Yeah, and uh, finally, obviously, after today's game with um, Kilshiel and Kilcash now topping this group, Ballypor and Ballyporeen uh, in second place. So the, um, the the four teams on top of their groups are the group winners: Mile Rovers, Clamell Commercials, J.K. Brackens, and Kilshiel and Kilcash. And the group runner up, up group runners up, then are Upper Churchstone Ban, Ardfin and Lockmore Castellani, and Ballyporeen. Great stuff, so Jonathan. And do we know? Like when these games will take place or when will uh, the draws be made and stuff? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, there probably is a CCC next week where the, when the draws will be done. Uh, the um, foot, next round of football championships uh, is 
in three weeks' time. There's hurling quarter, uh, preliminary quarterfinals and relegation next weekend. The hurling quarterfinals are the following weekend. So then the football is the, fo- the weekend after that. So a festival of sport here in Tip ahead over the next few weeks. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? And it's something to look forward to, you know. And that's, uh, I think, as I said before uh, to you, Stephen, like, you know, people have been locked up for long enough, you know, and, and with, 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 with the COVID and everything. And everybody just wants to get out, wants to see matches, wants to enjoy the games. And, you know, I think that the hurling and the football championships in Tipperary have been really, really enjoyable. And, um, you know, here's to say that there'll be lots and lots more of enjoyable games over the next number of weeks. Stuff, Jonathan Cullen, Samantha. Just finally, like the the championship now is alive. We know the four winners, the four runners up as well. Like it's it's great to have it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like Jonathan was saying, there people want to be at matches. The players want to play, and um, you've been locked up for so long that you just uh, you just want to get out there. And look, as you said earlier, it's hard in the bodies. It's uh, tiring, and you can see that the injuries may come if you don't. The lads don't look after themselves. They've hurt in one week and football another week so recovery is key and um, they really have to be looking after themselves especially after hard physical games like that Great stuff, Samantha Lambert here, the final score in Leahy Park Cashel, 114 for Ballyporeen 12 points for Mine Tipple 2 Ballyporeen march on in the championship My thanks to Robert Healy here alongside Tipple 2 Farm Machinery on Tip FM, it is the FPD Insurance Championships, hope you enjoyed today's coverage from us here in Cashel Slán and Ish Have you heard about the incredible prizes in the new Tipperary GA Club's draw? A half a million euro prize fund featuring cars to be won every month, loads of cash and holidays. And if you ever dreamed of being a racehorse owner, now's your chance. Hi everyone, Rachel Blackmore here. I have a passion for horse racing just like you all have a passion for GA. In the new Tipperary GAA Club Draw, starting on the 1st of October, there's an amazing prize to be won. It's a racehorse called Sean Hogan, who's in training with Mouse Morris. If you are the lucky winner, you'll get to pick the racing colours for Sean Hogan. You'll also get to take home all his prize money. There's a Renault car there to be won as well, so you'll have no excuses to go racing and cheer him on. There's cash and car prizes to be won every month, so this really is a fantastic prize. So I'd really encourage everyone to show their support and sign up today. The Tipperary GAA Club's draw. You have to be in it to win it.